In this tutorial, we're going to be learning to knit a men's sweater, this one here. And if you'd like your own copy of the pattern to follow along, it's available over on my website. I've also provided a link in the video description below. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about measuring and sizing for a good fit. We're going to learn about getting started at the neck cuff and working an I-cord edge, which will eventually allow for the zipper. We're going to learn how to work raglan increases and then eventually separate the sleeves to knit the body of the sweater. We're going to learn from switching to knitting a flat piece to knitting in the round. We're going to learn how to put in a zipper in our knitted work and we're going to learn how to do some tidy finishing work. So first up, we're going to cast on and get started with the ribbing. The first thing you'll want to do if you're following along with the men's sweater pattern is you're going to want to take a chest measurement for the guy you're knitting this for of yourself. So take a chest measurement and the listing in the pattern is for an actual chest measurement. We've talked about ease in the tutorials before and in this one there is two inches of positive ease, meaning that there's a little bit of extra room in the sweater. It's enough so that this sweater can be worn over a, a shirt very easily. So you'll want to go with the exact chest, chest measurement. This one is knit for a 42 inch chest measurement, but the actual measurement of the sweater is 44, two inches of ease, like I said. So you'll want to determine what size you're knitting, and then I always suggest taking a pen or a highlighter and going through the whole pattern and highlighting the numbers that you're going to be uh, using for that sweater size. Otherwise, you'll be in the middle of knitting and watching TV at the same time and you'll jump to the, <laughs> the wrong number. Ask me how I know this. So that is how you're going to determine your size. And next up, we're going to look at getting started with, um, oh, let me, let me start here. We're starting at the neck cuff. And the cuff of the neck is two by two ribbing. And then we move into a six by one ribbing for the rest of the sweater. So we're gonna start here with the cast on number and two by two ribbing. Let's take a look. You're going to want to leave yourself a long tail for the long tail cast on. And if you are confused about how much to leave, start with like a six inch tail and wrap the yarn around the needle like this for every stitch that you want to cast on. Usually I'll wrap half or a quarter of the total number of cast on stitches that I need and then just double it, quadruple it like that. And if you need a review of the long tail cast on, I'll give you a link right here. So I'm starting with a slip knot. And I'm going to cast on my stitches. And you'll cast on the number the pattern says for your size. I'm not going to cast on the whole number, I just want to demonstrate a couple of things. First is, let me pull in the sweater. Along the sides of the zipper, we have an I-cord edge. And that makes it really nice and tidy around the zipper. So we have to, we have to uh, maintain this on every row for the first part of the sweater. And to do this on a right side row, it says to slip three with the yarn in back. So you have the yarn back here, you slip three stitches without working them, and you always put your needle in as if to purl so you don't twist it. Then you knit the next stitch. And we're going to be working two by two ribbing, so I'll knit the next stitch as well, and then yarn forward to purl two. Yarn back to knit two, yarn forward to purl two. When I yarn forward, I'm just pulling the yarn, the working yarn forward between the two needles. And then I want to show you on the wrong side of the work, we're going to slip three with yarn in front to maintain that I-cord edge. So I slide, my yarn's in front here, I slip one, two, three stitches to the right needle without working them, and then I purl the next stitch. 
and then I'm just going to continue in rib with the way that I established it in the first row. Now let's talk a little bit about working really nice ribbing stitches. I have knit up a sample here and I've really made a mess of this. This is the six by one rib sample. And you can see here and here, I haven't even pulled this apart yet. There, there are the purl stitches hidden in there. This isn't blocked, so you can't really see the ribbing very well. But you can obviously see that the stitch next to the ribbing is a mess. The tension is a mess. It shouldn't look like that. Here's the nice example. You can't even tell where the rib stitches are, <clears throat> excuse me, until I pull it apart like this. Then you can see that is nice tension and ribbing. And I want to show you really quickly how to achieve this. Some people think that if you just pull the stitches really tightly in ribbing, it will give you nice tension. That's not exactly true. There's a place where you want to tug to make sure that it stays nice. And I'm showing you this in the six by one rib because I was able to make a better example using this rib, but it's the same with six by one or two by two rib that you're working in the cuff. So here I am at a purl stitch. I've worked six knit stitches. I'm gonna yarn forward and purl and yarn back. And this is where I give the tug, right here, before I go on to the next knit stitch. Now the reason that ribbing ends up looking sloppy sometimes is it's the action of pulling the yarn forward or back to change from knitting to purling that leaves a little bit of extra yarn between the two stitches that makes the stitches next to that look loose. Let me show you again on this. I'm going to work up to the next purl stitch. What we want to do is eliminate the yarn that's dragging between the needles on the yarn forward and yarn back. So I'm going to yarn forward and sometimes on this, or usually on this, I'll take my index finger and actually push that knot forward right there to eliminate the distance between the last stitch and the next stitch. I'll do that again. The last stitch was knit, so the bottom of the stitch is here. Yarn forward and push that forward like that. Okay, then I purl the next stitch and I'm gonna go back to knitting now. So I yarn back and I tug right here, <clears throat> excuse me, to eliminate the drag between the two stitches. Next up, we're going to talk about working the raglan increases and placing markers. Once you finish knitting the neck cuff, then we're ready to move on to the body of the sweater and start the raglan increases. The raglan increases are, are increases that happen here, here, and the same thing in the back. And knitting a sweater like this allows us to knit the front, the sleeves, and the back all at the same time. It's also a way to make sure that you're going to end up with a sweater that really fits well when it's finished because you can try the sweater on while you're knitting it. Now, um, you finish the neck cuff, we're gonna start with placing the markers and knitting the uh, raglan increases. And your first row is a setup row where you're going to be purling and placing the markers. So let's take a look. I have an itty bitty sample here. Your neck cuff will be longer than this, okay? But you're purling and to place a marker, you just need a little ring marker like this. You put it on the right needle and you keep going. And that's all it takes to place a marker. And once I get to the end of this, I'll show you what, the, what it looks like all together. Okay, we have four markers. This is the front. This is actually the left front. This is a sleeve. This is the back. This is a sleeve. And this is the right front. I promise that you, it all works out. And now we're on a right side row, and every right side row is an increase row. I'm still going to maintain the I-cord edging, so I'm gonna slip three with the yarn in back and knit one. And you'll be following your pattern here because I'm just gonna knit because I'm not really, um, this sample isn't really big enough to do the six by one ribbing, but you'll wanna follow your samples to make sure that the ribbing stays on track. Okay, so here we are. We're left with uh, just one stitch left before the marker. I'm going to do a make one right, and I'll demonstrate this more slowly in just a moment. I'll knit one, 
slip the marker, knit one, and now I do a make one left. And those are the two increases around the marker. I'll work in ribbing following the pattern up to the next marker. Make one right, knit one, slip marker, knit one, make one left. So let me show you that the make one stitch is a little better. The make one is a one stitch increase and we have a right leaning and a left leaning version of it. We use the bar between two stitches to make this stitch. And to do a make one right, we take the tip of our left needle and put it in front to back. Whoops, I just did that backwards. We put it in back to front. Let me show you again, back to front. And we knit that stitch through the front loop like this. And you've made a stitch where there was not one before. So make one right, you pick it up back to front, the bar between two stitches, and knit it through the front loop. To do a make one left, we're going to take that same bar, pick it up front to back, and knit it through the back loop. One more time. Take the tip of the left needle, the bar between the two stitches, pick it up front to back, and knit it through the back loop. So you'll follow your pattern, you'll continue knitting in the ribbing and the raglan increases until you get to a point where the front zipper opening of the sweater is 12 inches long. And we're going to go from knitting a flat piece to knitting in the round, and that's what we'll cover next. Now you've gotten to a point in the sweater where you've knit the raglan increases for 12 inches, which is the length of the zipper opening of the sweater. Since this is a pullover, from there on down, the sweater is one piece, and it's not a cardigan with a zipper all the way down. So there, when we stop knitting a flat piece and start knitting in the round, we need to do something to make sure that the point where the bottom of the zipper is, is secure, and it's not just going to, uh, if it was just normal stitches, it would just be a weak spot in the sweater and pull apart. So this is a little technique that I made up to fix that. Here's my itty bitty sample. And I have too many stitches on here to really flatten it out and show you what it looks like, but here are my four markers. The first thing I do is I'm going to need a double pointed needle for this. I'm going to tink back, tink is the word knit backwards. I'm going to take out the last three stitches of the last row and put them onto this DPN. Okay, this is a little bit fiddly, but it's only three stitches. These three stitches also happen to be the I-cord edge that we've been working. So I'm going to hold the DPN behind the work and line it up with the first three stitches on the left needle. The right needle is just going to hang there for a moment. Okay, so three stitches here and we're going to work with the three stitches on this left needle. Now I need the right needle. I'm going to pull it out. No, I better not pull it out. It's not long enough for that. I'm going to knit the first stitch from the left needle with the first stitch from the DPN. So I put my needle into the front of that stitch, then to the front of the stitch behind it, wrap it, and pull it through both stitches. So I've just combined two stitches into one. Put it into the front of the left needle, the first stitch of the left needle, put it into the first stitch of the DPN, wrap it, and pull it through both stitches and a third time. Now the DPN's empty, we can put that away for now. And we have a nice join here at the bottom of the zipper. Next up, we're gonna talk about separating the sleeves. Up until now, we've been knitting the front 
or the two fronts of the sweater, the sleeves and the back all at once. Now we're at a point in the sweater where the body of the sweater is wide enough and we want to separate the sleeves and reserve them to knit them later. So we're going to just be working on the trunk of the body from here on out, but we have to get those sleeves separated. So, um, well, let's just take a look. Here's my little sample. This is the opening for the zipper here, and we followed the pattern to knit up to where we need to um, separate for the sleeves. I'm just working to the first marker here, following my rib pattern. When I get to the first marker, I'm going to leave this marker in. I'm going to take out all the rest of the markers in the sweater, but this is going to be the new beginning of my round, so I'm going to leave that one in. And now I'm going to take some scrap yarn. I always use brightly colored leftover sock yarn so I can really see it. When I go to take it out, it's easy to see, and it's also very fine. So my tapestry needle and my sock yarn, I'm going to slide all of the sleeve stitches, which are all of the stitches after the first marker, onto the scrap yarn. And you always slip the stitches as if to purl. You put your tapestry needle in like you're going to purl the stitch and slip it onto the needle. I do this up to the second marker, and that marker I want to take out. I don't need it anymore. Okay, now I can break the sock yarn, and I usually tie a little knot here to make sure that, you know, God forbid the dog should get a hold of it or something. I want to make sure that this sock yarn is not going to come out and leave all those stitches live. Now we're at the underarm part of the sweater, back here at our working yarn. Whoops, I lost the marker that I put here. There it is. There's my marker. I want to make sure that stays there. I'm going to use the backwards loop cast on method to cast on stitches here under the arm. And to do that, it's, this is a way of casting on stitches when you only have one strand to work with. I'm going to put my thumb on the yarn like this, flip it, and just slide that loop onto the needle. The yarn's in my palm like this. Thumb on the yarn, flip it, slide that onto the left needle. And you'll follow your pattern to get the right number of stitches. I'm going to cast on four there. And now skipping all those sleeve stitches, just pretend that they're not even there. Just continue working the rib pattern with the stitches that are waiting for you there on the left needle. And you see these sleeve stitches are just stuck here on the scrap yarn. And you'll continue around until you get to the next marker. Slide all those stitches onto scrap yarn until you get to the final marker. And then you'll remove those two markers, cast on using the backwards loop cast on the number of stitches the pattern tells you, and just keep going around. From there on out, you're going to be knitting the trunk, the body of the sweater. No more increases. You just need to maintain the rib pattern as you have it set. And next up, we're going to talk about doing the I-cord bind-off. In this sweater, we use what's called the I-cord bind-off on the bottom of the sleeves and the bottom of the sweater, which gives it a really nice plain edge. Uh, a lot of times you'll see the same ribbing that we used at the neck cuff, the bottom of the sleeves and the bottom of the sweater, but this is more of straight fitting. It doesn't, doesn't cinch in anywhere. So I'll show you what I-cord binding looks like and then we'll take a look at how to do it. This is a little sample I knit up that we're going to be using later in the tutorial. This is just a normal cast on, but this is the I-cord bind off. You see it's just a nice rolled edge and um, it's it doesn't um, cinch in like ribbing would. Just really, really plain. Okay, here's my big chunky sample so you can see how to do it. This is just plain stockinette stitch and the I-cord bind off is going to be the same for the sleeves and the bottom of the sweater. To start out, 
we do a backwards loop cast on onto this needle. And I'm using DPNs here, but you'll be using the circular needles or DPNs that you were using. So just like the underarm casting on, we're going to put three stitches onto the needle. And that'll get us started. We start by knitting two. This is kind of a slow going bind off, but it's worth it. Knit two, slip the next stitch as if to knit, meaning you put your needle in there like you're going to knit it, but don't work it, just slide it over. And then knit the next one. Then you're going to take the stitch that you slipped, which is the second one in on the needle, and pass it over the other stitch, binding that off essentially. Then slide those three stitches back onto the left needle. So that's the process. You knit two, slip the next stitch as if to knit, knit one, and then pass the slip stitch over the last stitch on the needle, leaving you with three. Slide those back on the left needle. Slip one, knit one, pass it over. And then there's your I-cord edge. This is very chunky, you can see. Next up, we're going to talk about doing the finishing work on the sweater. I want to quickly talk about doing some nice finishing work on the sweater. You've put all this work into it so far, so we want to make sure it's nice. The last little bits that you do are really nice and finish the sweater up nicely. The first thing that I want to talk about is the neck. And this is the full size sweater. And when I was doing this, um, I wanted to make the ridge between the neckline and the rest of the sweater fixed and not something that could be loose and spread out over, um, over time or just over wearing it. And so there's one trick that I did that I want to show you. Let's take a look. If I open up the zipper, let me open it more. I've put in this cord right between the neck cuff and the rest of the sweater. It is just this cord that has no give to it. You could also use bias tape, I suppose. It's something I found in my sewing basket. I don't even know why I had it, but it's perfect for this. And I just used a regular sewing needle and regular sewing thread, no yarn or anything, to stitch this down, just grabbing a little bit of the back of each stitch here as I, as I went across. And so that makes this fit up around the neck really nicely and not spread out at all. Just a little trick you can decide to do if you want it to fit like that. Okay, now I want to show you, well, I'll show you something else now. While you're knitting this, you're probably not seeing the rib as it is here, like this. And that's because the rib doesn't really show until you block it. And when you wash it and block it, you want to take a measuring tape and make sure that this is being stretched out to the size that it's supposed to be. And when you do that, the pearl uh, ridges will come through and then you'll see the pattern in the sweater. But yours is probably all smushed up like this right now if it's still unblocked. Okay. The last thing I want to show you, here's the little I-cord bind off sample again. I want to show you how to weave in this end and correct this gap right here. So we have our tapestry needle we want to connect this end of the I-cord to this end. And to do that, I'm going to take my tapestry needle and go into a V over on this side, the first V over on this side. And when I pull that tight, that pretty much seals it up. I'm going to go back down into the same hole I came out of. And there, that looks a lot better, but we still have a little gap underneath. To fix that, I'm just going to weave in the end, whoops, around that gap to close it up.
and that looks really good. And you'll do that at all the I cord edge, the edges, the sleeves, and the bottom. So now you want to go ahead and block your sweater um, so that it's full size when we go to put in the zipper coming up next. So now you have a completely knitted sweater and the last thing we have to do is to put in the zipper. Uh, you want to go ahead and wash and block this and set it out flat to dry before we do the zipper. We want the sweater to be the full size blocked and everything before we put the zipper in. And to put the zipper in, I'm using a technique that I learned from Interweave Knits Magazine, which is really smart. It's a way of making the zipper into another knitted piece, which makes it seam really nicely um, into the sweater. The, uh, if you are going to try to machine sew or hand sew the zipper into the sweater, it will never ever come out as well as it does with this technique. I've put a little bit of a twist on the technique. Let me show you how it goes. Here's my little sample piece and of course my sweater's not finished but the part that we'll be using is finished and this is blocked to be the full size. The first thing I'm going to do to save myself a lot of math is to create my own ruler. I want to look at purl bumps, so I just turn the sweater inside out. And I found the ribbing section here with the purl bumps. I'm going to take a piece of paper and mark every, you know, I'm lining it up with one column of purl bumps, and mark every other purl bump along the way here, like this, thus creating my own ruler. I'd want to use the whole length of this little piece of paper. Then I jump over here to the zipper, and if you're using a light color zipper, it's easy to see, but I'm using, if you use a Sharpie or something, but since I'm using a black zipper, I'm using a white colored pencil to make the marks on the zipper. So I'll line this up, and you can see I already have some marks on here. Well, actually, I'm not sure if you can see them, but I'll make them darker. And I learned to go ahead and do this uh, in sections because the colored pencil does rub out and you have to, to you end up redoing it. So I'll do like half the zipper and then mark the other half and then do the other side. But that's enough for now for demonstration. Now it's time you need this little tool called a knit picker and it's available at any craft store. I was surprised I had never heard of one before. It is um, a little tiny latch hook. I'll put it against the back background. Do you see this? The black background. There's this little latch here, the hook and the little latch. It's, it's actually made for fixing snags in sweaters, but it works so well for this. So I'm going to take the knit picker and poke it through the first spot that I marked on the zipper. Take my working yarn, put it around the hook, and then close the latch. I pull that through. Now I have a loop in my zipper, and I need one thing that I don't have here. There we go. This is a size 7 double-pointed needle that I used. Um, it's the same size as I used for the sweater. I'm just using this for size. I'm going to put it in that loop and tighten it up. Now I know my loop is the right size. I can pull that out, go back to the knit picker, open the latch, put it through that loop, and poke it into the zipper in the next marked spot. Take the working yarn, put it around the, the hook, close the latch, and pull that through. And when I pull it through, I not only pulled it through the zipper, but through the loop, the last loop that we made. Get the double pointed needle in there and tighten it up. And make sure that it's tight on the back as well. because You can end up with a pretty messy looking back of the zipper if you're not careful, like what I have going right here right now. That's better. Back to the knit picker, open the latch through the loop, poke it into the next marked spot. Whoops, I'm trying to do this with the wrong hand. Into the hook, close the latch, pull it through, size it with the DPN. 
And this is a little fiddly, but you do get into a groove where your hands just kind of know what they're doing. You don't have to think about it so much. Okay, one more time. Okay, so you'll want to finish this. Well, let me show you what we have here. Isn't that awesome? Little V's, just like knit stitches, along the sides of the zipper. It's going to make it really easy to seam it into the sweater. Let's go back to the sweater. Or the little half sweater here. So you'll want to use your own judgment here to put the zipper in like this. You can either have it lined up so the zipper is completely hidden or so that a little bit of it shows. That's up to you. Depends on how far you sew it in here, of course. So you're, what you'll want to do then to, to sew this in is to um, take your tapestry needle and a piece of yarn, go sideways through the first V that you see, and um, um, vertically through two, two pearl bumps over here back over this way through a V, and then down and through two pearl bumps over here. And you know it's going to work out because we actually made the ruler that we used on the zipper from the pearl bumps in the sweater. So grabbing two pearl bumps over here will match up perfectly with one of the Vs over here. And then you'll want to fold these ends down and hand sew them with just needle and sewing thread. That's what I did, just tack them down. Once you get the zipper put in, you'll probably want to use a steam iron to smooth the whole thing out without pressing down. Just use steam and, and then pat it out with your hands. Uh, zippers can melt under really high heat depending on what kind of zipper you're using, so just steam is fine. Good luck.